I apologize again for my weakened pipes. I'll do my best. You may have to adjust your volume. Um, last lesson, we talked about endothermic reactions. We said endo, enter, into, energy is going into. Now we're talking about exothermic chemical reactions, where the energy or heat is exiting, leaving. Uh, heat or energy is now a product. <clears throat> so for an endothermic reaction, we saw heat or energy enter on the left side. Now we're seeing heat or energy exit on the right side. <clears throat> what this means is that uh, the energy that was formerly contained within the bonds in species A and B has now been freed. A and B smashed together with enough energy and proper alignment to have an effective collision. When they have an effective collision, bonds within A and B are broken, and new bonds to make C and D are formed. In that process, this energy is given off. If you see energy on the right side as a product, that means that when the collisions happen <clears throat> and old bonds are broken and new bonds are form, formed, the net result is a loss of energy. The formation of new bonds um, and <clears throat> the breaking of old bonds resulted in a net loss of energy. Now, what does that mean? When it comes to the diagrams, we want to be able to identify immediately uh, when we look at one of these diagrams, whether it's exo or endothermic, right away. The way we do that is by looking at those two things, the reactants and products. I see the reactants on the left are higher than the products on the right, and that is automatically going to indicate that I have an exothermic reaction. 100% of the time, if the reactants are higher than the products, you have an exothermic reaction. We flip back, we look, here you have the reactants are lower than the products. That will always indicate an endothermic reaction. So every time you see an energy diagram, the very first thing you want to do is just locate the products and reactants. That's going to help you determine or allow you to determine whether or not the reaction <clears throat> is endo or exothermic. And then we'll answer the rest of the questions from there. The third thing we want to locate is that activated complex. And then we do our dotted lines. I mentioned before, these three dotted lines, there's our activated complex. That's always the highest. That's the peak. It intersects with the peak. That tells us the potential energy of the activated complex. A dotted line here for the reactants. They will not always draw these in. A lot of times they won't. In fact, on a, on a test or quiz question, <clears throat> that dotted line indicates the potential energy of the reactants. And then the third dotted line, the lowest, in this case, the lowest, uh, represents the potential energy of the products. So, so we've already sort of covered the, the parts of this. Uh, let's go ahead, in the previous lesson, let's go ahead and do our labeling. A is the potential energy of the reactants. Well, we already located that dotted line and mentioned it. There's A. For B, potential energy of the products. C, potential energy of the activated complex. Again, these things are not going to be labeled for you normally. But it's important that you know you're labeling that dotted line, that level, okay? On the y-axis, <clears throat> that indicates the potential energy of each of those three uh, points on this reaction pathway. D, the activation energy of the forward reaction. Now that's moving from our starting line left to right, forward to the top of the hill. The energy it takes to get from the starting line to the top of the hill is our forward activation energy. So that means I have to draw in an arrow. In fact, in this case, they've drawn it for me. The arrow connecting those two lines it is D, our forward activation energy. Now for E, we're just going to read this from right to left. If the forward reaction goes from left to right, the reverse starts at the finish line takes us to the top of the hill. We're just coming from the opposite direction. This is the reverse 
activation energy. Now you see the dotted line connecting, or the uh, arrow connecting those two dotted lines. That represents our reverse activation energy or the activation energy of the reverse reaction. And then F, the final uh, label we have to place on this, again, is the most commonly asked question when it comes to a potential energy diagram, and that's the overall energy of reaction. That's the difference between the reactants and the products, the delta H. The arrow connecting those two dotted lines is F, or our delta H, the energy of reaction, or overall enthalpy of reaction. That is always products minus reactants. Now, the last thing I want to do to sort of put this, since this is products minus reactants, here's our products, here's our reactants. The products are lower than the reactants, so the delta H, in this case, is negative. Products minus reactants. Products this level, let's say this was 50 and this is 150, the reactants. You'd have an overall delta H of negative 100. Whereas on the previous page, you have products minus reactants. In this case, delta H is positive. For endothermic reactions, the delta H or enthalpy will always be positive. So again, let's identify based on the fact that we see our reactants here, products here. Uh, the reactants are higher than the products. It's automatically exothermic. Locate our activated complex and then move to label from there. Looking at the bottom, quick question and answer. Go ahead and pause these. Just a question about a catalyst, the addition of a catalyst. <clears throat> what quantities would it change? How would it change the delta H? And what do you think the benefits would be to adding a catalyst? Remember what catalysts do to the rate of reaction, what they do to the energy involved. So use your answers to the first two questions to answer the third. We'll talk about them tomorrow in class.